Alrighty guys, welcome to this webinar. I'm doing this webinar um, a little bit different than usual today. Um, obviously we usually don't have our webinars on daily webinars on Friday, but I just wanted to uh, catch up with you guys and just kind of recap um, this week since we only had two webinars this week since I was in Vegas, the first, well still in Vegas, but didn't have um, webinars planned at the beginning of the week. So basically, going to go over just what I'm interested in um, and just kind of try to give you guys as much value as possible, okay? So first things first, I just want you guys to just know that next week, big thing is next Wednesday is FOMC meeting minutes, okay? Um, this is definitely going to cause some volatility with the dollar, all right? So I'm definitely interested in trading the dollar, but um, probably not Wednesday, of course, but that is the key thing to watch out for next week. But I just kind of want to go in and just look at the dollar index and see where we've gone because we've been really accurate. You guys know that pretty much every move that I've called has happened over the past you know, couple weeks here or uh, yeah, week or so. The dollar broke out to the upside as expected. And if you just take what, if you just write one thing down this entire webinar, just write down that the dollar should continue to strengthen, okay? That means Euro USD should continue to move lower, okay? We obviously had the correction this week or, or well, the beginning of the week popped up even higher. End of the, this week corrected exactly as expected, guys. I told you guys, if you've been watching the daily webinars this week, that I said that the dollar was going to correct a little bit. We were going to see Euro USD most likely pull back if we saw the dollar index go down as well. And that's exactly what we saw. But my target, specifically like on Euro USD, remains at 110. I think Euro USD is going to go even lower. We're probably going to start heading towards parity to be quite honest with Euro USD. Um, something I just want to point out really quick is there is a head and shoulders on Euro USD guys and that neckline was broken um, last week and then this week we were we kind of made a little bit of a pullback back up to this area. So my area of interest. I am very, very interested in taking shorts on Euro USD next week, guys. Okay. So I just want to be very clear with that. But if you notice this head and shoulders, like this all the way coming back down to 1.02, if you guys remember, if you guys were with us at the end of 2016, early 2017, you know that we got very close to parity, right? And then we bounced off. And then, you know, since then we've been on a bullish run until, um, earlier this year when we broke out and then we've been bearish ever since. So I would expect Euro USD to head more so towards parity. Like I think we're going to drop at least, um, at least to 110 before the end of the year guys. And that's a, that's a conservative. I think we're gonna go much lower than 110. We're probably going to head closer towards parity before the end of this year. Okay. Um, and that is that, that, oops, let me turn my volume down a little bit. That's the main thing that I wanted to just, just to point out for you guys. I'm sure some of you guys already saw this head and shoulders, but just know that we're going to get definitely aggressive with Euro USD selling. I mean, and when I say aggressive guys, what I mean is just, we're going to be, you know, taking more setups on it. I don't mean risking more. We always keep risk the same. Um, I mean, aggressive as far as, um, like, you know, normally the, the risk reward trades that we've taken recently have been, you know, very, very high one to five, one to six, uh, that type of thing. And we, you know, maybe be a little bit more appropriate looking for like one, two risk to rewards and just getting into some more trades on um, scaling in on shorts. What this means with USD Swiss Franc is I am also very, very biased to USD Swiss Franc break breaking out. Okay. I don't know when it's going to break out, but I am fairly certain that it's going to break out. And if you guys, you guys can see a couple of zones here. Um, honestly, like I just have the, this is parity right here, right? The, this whole big green zone, the only thing I have on this chart is parity, which is the 1.0 area, okay? Um, but to be a little bit more specific, right? If we just kind of delete that and we just look at this, obviously we can see right here. So this is our near-term resistance that we need to break, okay? Um, once we start to get some daily candle closes above this resistance, um, which is literally breaking just a little bit below parity. Like if you look at here and you mark it off, that's pretty much parity. If we want to put, if we want to mark off parity, we just put a one right there. So that's parity. That's really where we want to get above. So this 
zone. Okay. Once we get above there, guys, like it's going to skyrocket. Okay. Like we're going to see some big, big, big moves. We're just like, we're going to see Euro USD crash. Um, we're going to see something like this happen on USD Swiss franc. Okay. And that also means the dollar index is going to keep going higher. Okay. Um, as far as long term, yes, Kevin, I do use a blue microphone. I use the, it's like the higher, it's like the second level one or third level one. It's the, it's the black one. I think the, it says blue microphone, the snowball. It's the, it's the black one. It's not the white one. Um, and that is those two guys. I mean, those are the main things like for, for in my head, because sometimes I feel like it's hard to, like exactly explain what I'm thinking, but Euro USD and USD Swiss franc are very high priority um, for clean long term setups. Okay, the same way Euro USD. I mean, guys, you guys know that we have been ever since up here, ever since the break right here, ever since this initial break right here. You guys know we've been bearish. Our overall outlook long term has been bearish on Euro USD, and it continues to come true. So, um. Definitely, guys, this is this is stuff to capitalize on, and we're going to be capitalizing on it. We're going to be looking at getting into longer-term trades, too. Um, one thing, just to address the whole longer-term things, is you guys have to keep in mind that, yes, sometimes it's great to get into long-term trades, but there's also a swap. So swap, it dep if, if markets go into a lot of consolidation, for example, like right here, this zone, um, you would have been paying a swap for holding every single one of these days and swap does add up, especially like, you know, when, uh, it's a, it's a major pair like that Euro USD, the swap gets pretty big. So, um, that's usually why we tend to take trades that last, you know, average about, you know, maybe like 12 to 24 hours because, you know, maybe we'll have one or two swaps that we pay at the most, but usually we're out of it within, you know, Within 12 to 24 to 48 hours. So um, that is that. But we're, we're always looking for trades with, it's always good to look for swing trades with positive swap as well because we, you can get paid um, sometimes. And then actually some, some pairs don't actually charge a swap. So like Swiss franc yen this week, that the, this trade that we um, had a sell on and we just closed had zero swap. Okay. Um, this is another pair I'm also still bearish on. Um, I, I personally, you know, I definitely like think that this candle closed like very bearish. I think it's still going to continue to go down, but um, I, you guys just know, obviously, if you've been around here for a while, you know, I'm a pretty conservative trader. So, um, you know, I'm not, not a huge, and especially with this, specifically also this pair is kind of new to me. You guys know that Swiss franc yen, I don't really ever trade this pair. So that was also a big factor too. It's not like a pair I've been trading for the past four years. And I really understand like the back of my hand, it's still um, pretty volatile in my opinion, but this is, this was a pretty, pretty spot on trade guys. I mean, we couldn't have asked for really a better entry. We had literally our first entry was perfect right here. Our we had zero drawdown, straight drop, came back right in, oh, very, very, very little drawdown, and then moved back lower. So I'm still very bearish on Swiss franc yen. USD CAD, we're going to look at scaling in on potential buys on USD CAD. Okay, so um, I went over this a little bit more in detail on yesterday's webinar if you want to, but this webinar is just to give you, I'm, I'm, I'm not really trying to go super into detail on any individual pairs. I'm just trying to give you guys kind of like a, a, um, like an outlook, basically like what you can write down if you have like an area or maybe you have a whiteboard, you know, that you erase or whatever, every, every once in a while you can write down, uh, you know, what we're looking for. And this is all like over the next couple months, the directions that we're looking at things heading. Okay. Um, so USD CAD, I think it's gonna move back up towards 134, but, uh, I'm glad we stayed away from this. I'm glad I trusted my instinct with staying away. I, I said specifically that this pair has been pretty volatile and I am biased overall to the upside just based on the major support in this zone that we've talked about. But, uh, once again, Friday, we saw, you know, some more manipulation in, in it, in it, uh, come back down to test the, the bottom or test the support zone. We can see that. So I think this is going to give us some good opportunities to buy. We're definitely watching this zone next week. Okay. Um, 
Let's see, is there anything else that I'm super interested in? Gold, I'm still biased towards downside on gold, guys. So obviously we got the we got the retracement, but markets are never gonna move straight down and straight up. And I, I specifically said the dollar index needed to correct to go higher. So that obviously means that gold needs to correct higher to go lower because they do the opposite of each other. So just as we've we've saw Euro USD pull back at the end of this week, we saw dollar index pull back at the end of this week. We're seeing this pull back as well. Um, I don't think it's gonna go back above. 12, I really, 1200, I really don't think, I think 1200 is going to be the resistance. Um, probably not, honestly, not going to enter a trade on gold. I think there's better um, risk reward on other pairs. But again, if you guys trade it on your own, that's where gold is headed towards 1150. And then I think, I think 1150 is very easily achieved. It can be probably achieved next week, maybe. Um, and then we're going to go towards 1100 and ultimately towards a thousand bucks for a troy ounce. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, other than that, guys, I don't really want to waste your guys' time. There's nothing else over here that I'm, oh, uh, GBP AUD. Um, wow, that absolutely moved. Holy cow. Okay. So yesterday guys, wow, that was, that's crazy. So, um, I, if you if you're connected to the trade copier, I entered GBP AUD yesterday right here. Um, it was like a perfect entry. I didn't have I explained on yesterday's webinar that I didn't have enough time to put it inside a Slack because literally the second I entered, it dropped eight pips and then kept falling. Um, this was a scalp on our end because we had already achieved a way past a one to two risk to reward. But uh, this was my initial bias going into it. This was my initial bias. Uh, the trade I actually had this on yesterday's webinar, so one to ten risk to reward. So, GBP AUD um, short term downside next week as well. Like if, if we can get maybe a little bit of a pullback next week, if maybe I feel like the markets are probably going to gap up a little bit, something like this, and then early early week, first couple hours of the week, we're probably going to see price push up towards this this previous support, and we'll probably look at taking some um, shorts in this area um, to go lower. But uh, on the higher time frame, uh, GBP AUD is is very bearish. You can see that very nice weekly candle, re nice rejection. Right, we broke the we got a ni nice clean uh, movement around the 50 EMA. Right, previous support around the 50 EMA, showing that this is a significant zone. A couple weeks ago, broke through. Last week, came back up and retested this zone, and then this week got the rejection off of the 50 EMA. So just just based off of um, trading off of zones and trading based off of that, the EMA right there, the higher time frame, uh, we can already have a bearish stance. Um, pretty clear why I took the sell yesterday on this pair it was obviously because of the exhaustion in this zone. We had retested the previous support. So just simple price action, guys, simple market structure combined with good risk to reward and good risk management day over day, month over month, year over year. And that's literally it. Um, so that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoy you guys' this weekend. Uh, we will revisit the markets um, after they've opened on Sunday. Uh, this has been another great week for us. Like Once again, I think this is uh, like seven or eight weeks in a row now that we've closed in the green. We locked in well over 5% profit just this week. Um, and yeah, it's just been, a, just been a really, really, really great week. So yeah. Um, or I'm sorry, we're at, we're at well over 5% for the month. Uh, I think this week we closed off like three or 4%. So uh, that's it guys. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, but I hope you guys have a great weekend. See you guys Sunday.